Hello, Internet. Welcome to Full Frontal Developer. No doubt you've seen some flashy web page content in your time and probably wondered how these things are made. Today we'll be working on a project together and we'll show how with only a few lines of code you can do something incredible yourself. Now, the project we're going to be working on is going to be a rotating hidden navigation bar. The finished product is going to be over here in my browser. You see I have here a interesting article by some outstanding journalist. There is some dummy article text right here and a title for a great image. And here we have a beautiful image with some architecture and some subtext for the article. The real fun is going to be in the upper left. You see we have this nice little hamburger button and when we click on it, the entire article pivots counterclockwise revealing a hidden navigation bar. And if we exit back out, it will return itself to its original position. So nothing super fantastic, but pretty interesting and a lot of fun to build. And so starting this, we're going to go ahead and open up our Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a great application for doing uh, front-end development. And we have here the obligatory files, the index.html for the body, the script.js, or I'm sorry, the script.js for the functionality, and the style.css for the styling. We're going to need to source out a few external resources for this project. We're going to need to give ourselves access to um, these interesting icons right here, which we'll do from fontawesome.com. Also, the text that I selected is the Lato text that we got from uh, fonts.google.com. And this beautiful desaturated uh, sort of purple indigo color I've selected from a color palette that we can get from uh, color.adobe.com. And finally, this beautiful image here we got from unsplash.com, and it's a, just a simple matter of selecting your favorite image and copying and pasting the uh, address into the source for the image in the HTML. We'll show you how all of that's done. Let's go ahead and start with our index.html, and in fact, we're going to close this down and open up a new live server so that we can see this project built on the fly. So the first thing we're going to need to do is declare our doc type, since this is going to be an HTML5. We'll open up an HTML tag right here, and inside that we will open up a head tag. In the head tag, we are going to need to include some meta tags. The first one will be our character set, which will be UTF-8, which will give us a nice basic uh, standard encoding of all of our characters. After that, we're going to need to define our viewport, and that's going to be viewport. This will enable us to ensure that all of the different devices that this is viewed with is gonna look to scale and full sized. So we'll set the content equal to the width, equal to the device width, like so. And we will make the initial scale equal to 1.0, like so. No quotation. And we'll close out that meta tag Next, we're going to need to include the references to our links. And the first one is going to be over here at Font Awesome. If you go to fontawesome.com and click on Start for Free, they invite you to submit your email and they will email you a link to their style sheet. However, you can also Google for that link. I have a copy and paste of that link already so that you can save yourself the trouble of sending them any email. And it's a fairly long link. Again, it's something you can Google for, and it's gonna be put right there. After that, we'll go ahead and make a link to our CSS style sheet, the one that we have ourselves. It's gonna be a style sheet, and we're going to give it an href of style.css, which is what we named it. All right, looking pretty good so far. Let's close this link out, and then I can't forget to close that link out. That should be everything. No, actually, let's go ahead and add ourselves a title. Why not? We'll call this rotating navigation. And after the title, I think that's everything we need in the head. So then we can open up our body tag here. And in the body, we're going to have a couple of div tags, the main container div tag, and then a navigation div tag. So let's start with doing a div of class container. All right, and inside this div tag, we're going to have another div tag that we're going to call circle container. So let's do
circle container like so. We'll close that div tag out and inside this one we're going to have another div called circle. This is going to be the upper left navigation or the upper left uh, um, initiator for the navigation. So inside the circle div we're going to include two buttons, the open button and the close button. So we'll start with a button that we will give an ID of close and this button is going to have an icon that we're actually going to source from the font awesome the link that we have up here the class is going to be fas fa dash times and that will give us access to that uh, little x icon that we have for our close button we'll close out that icon and next we'll do another button for the open icon, we'll give that an ID of open. And this one is going to be an icon of class. Again, we're going to use the font awesome. So we'll do FA and we'll make this one the bars, otherwise known as the hamburger button. And we'll close out that icon and that gives us our two buttons that we need. After that, we can exit out of both of those divs and we can make ourselves a div called content. Now inside here is going to be the article content. We'll start with a nice H1 tag and we'll call it interesting article. Then we're going to do a small tag by outstanding journalist like so. And then we'll do ourselves a paragraph tag to put the actual article content in. And inside this paragraph tag, let's just do a lorem 100. That'll give us some nice dummy text, like so. Outside of the paragraph tag, we will include uh, an h3 tag to give ourselves a title for the image. This will be a great image. And then we will do an image tag. And this image we're going to actually source from unsplash.com. I have already uh, copied and pasted the link to that image, but you're welcome to find an image that suits your taste. Otherwise, we will just do a source and insert the uh, reference to that image right there. We'll close out the image tag right there because that's about all we need. And lastly, we'll do another paragraph underneath that, which will be the subtext for the image. And in this one, let's just do a lorem 75, like so. All right, we're looking pretty good so far. We'll close out that div and the one after that. But before we exit the body, we will start ourselves a navigation div. And in this navigation, we're going to have an unordered list full of list items. So let's do unordered list. And inside here, we're going to do a list item. And inside the list item, we're going to do an icon of class. And again, needing to access the CSS from Font Awesome, we're going to do the FAS. This one's going to be called FA dash home and that'll give us that nice little home icon and with a space we'll type the word home I'm going to copy and paste this twice more and we will do fa dash user dash alt and that will give us that nice little profile icon and we'll call this one about and lastly we will do fas fa dash envelope that gives us the icon for our contact link, like so. And this is looking pretty good so far. I think that's going to be everything we need, except, of course, for the script reference to our script.js for the functionality. And that closes that out. I think that's going to be everything we need for the HTML. Let's go ahead and save that and see what it looks like. Okay, so nothing super fantastic. We have both of the buttons in the upper left like we wanted. There's the title, there is the uh, author, we have the content, we have the title for the image, the image itself, the subtext, and then we have the three navigation icons which will eventually be hidden for us. So we're coming along pretty good so far. This is looking like it's shaping up pretty good. Now let's jump in here to the style.css. This is going to be the most work of the project because a lot of it's going to be the animation and the color and hiding and unhiding things. So if we jump into style.css, 
Um, I've already selected the Lato font for this project, but feel free to go to fonts.google.com and select one that's more to your liking. Otherwise, I have the import link right here for that font. And moving forward, let's go ahead and do a universal styling. We're gonna do a box sizing of border box for the entire project. And next we can style the body. For the body, we're gonna do some, just some basic styling. We need to include the font family of Lotto. And we'll define it as sans serif, like so. Next, we're gonna do a background color. And that's going to be just a nice dark gray. The text color is going to be a little bit lighter gray. A little bit darker gray, I should say. And then overflow, we're gonna do overflow X as hidden. That's gonna give us access to a uh, vertical scroll bar, but not a horizontal scroll bar. And then we're gonna define the margin as zero so that we can uh, specifically define, define the margin for each individual item as we see fit. That takes care of all of the body styling. Next, we're gonna to start to work on the main container. So we'll do container style and give it the following properties. We'll do background color and we'll make this F A F A F A, nice little off white there. We're going to do a transform to take care of the uh, the the pivoting of the entire article, but we need to define the transform origin as being top left, and that will make sure that it pivots from the top left as a almost like a swivel. We'll define the transition for the transform of 0 0.5 seconds linear, so it's a nice smooth pivot. The width will define as being 100 view width, and the minimum height we're gonna define as 100 view width, view height, I should say, and we'll give it a padding of 50 pixels. All right, I think that's everything we need for the container object at large. Now, let's define what the container looks like when it's in a show nav state. So when it has the show nav class, this container is going to transform. It's going to transform by rotating negative 20 degrees. And that should be everything we need to do for that. Now we'll do the circle container. And inside the circle container, we need to have a position as fixed We'll do top is equal to negative 100 pixels, left is equal to negative 100 pixels. And the reason we're doing this is because the circle element is going to be 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall, but we don't wanna see the entire circle. We only wanna see the bottom quarter of the circle. So we're gonna have a 200 pixel wide circle that we're gonna offset to the left and to the top by 100 pixels each. And that gives us just the bottom quarter of the circle believe that's everything we need for the circle container. So moving forward, let's define the circle div. This one is gonna have a background color, and that's gonna be that nice uh, desaturated uh, purple indigo that I've chosen. It's gonna be uh, 6A5DF0. And we'll do a height, as we mentioned, of 200 pixels. We're gonna do a width of 200 pixels and a border radius of 50% will make this a perfect circle. We're gonna position it relative to the document and then we'll apply a transition because we need this one to also pivot so it reveals the X out button. The, tr the transition will be on a transform of 0 0.5 seconds linear, so it's gonna move at the same speed and pace as the document. All right, I think that's everything we need for the circle element. So now we can go to the circle as it has the class of show nav. So circle, actually we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the container object because we're only gonna apply the class show nav to the container. So container with the class of show nav, when that is uh, styled, we're gonna grab the circle, circle uh, div out of that and we're going to style the circle div as follows, and that's going to be its own transform. 
which is going to be a rotate of negative 70 degrees. All right, so now we'll go ahead and start to style the circle button. So inside the circle div, we will grab the button element and we're going to give it a cursor of pointer so it looks like they can click on it. We'll position it absolute and it's going to be a top positioning of 50% and a left positioning of 50%. Hopefully this is becoming obvious why. The height is going to be 100 pixels and then we'll make the background transparent. We'll take away any border that it might have and we'll make the font size 26 pixels to make that icon nice and big. Finally, we'll adjust the color to be a nice basic white. And I think that's everything we need for the button element. We can come down and we can grab the circle div and when the button has focus, we will take away any outline. Then we need to address each individual button, so the open and close button. So let's go ahead and address the circle div item, the button element of ID close. We'll give it a top of 60%. And we're going to transform with a rotate of 90 degrees. And then we're going to transform origin to ensure that it's locked and swiveled, or rather, rather that it pivots on the top left. And then for the circle button open, that's just going to be uh, left of 60%. Okay, so I think we got everything we need there for the buttons. Now we need to work on the navigation. So that's going to be in the container, in its show nav state, container.showNav. And we need to include the navigation list item, like so. This one's going to be a transform. Translate X of zero and a transition delay of 0 0.3 seconds. Okay, so that's going to be the container in the show nav class state with the navigation list item. Let's now address the navigation in total. We'll give it a position fixed. Uh, bottom up from 40 pixels, left up or left from zero. And then to make sure that it appears in the very front, we'll give it a nice big Z index. We'll make the Z index 100. Now we're going to need to uh, address some of the navigation elements. So let's start with the navigation unordered, unordered list at large. The unordered list is going to be a list style of none. We don't want any bullets. And we'll give it a padding left of 30 pixels because we want it to stick out a little bit and eventually we're going to have it nice little uh, nice little stepping margins. The way that we're going to do that is by grabbing the navigation unordered list list item and styling this with a text transformation of all uppercase. We'll color it to be white. We'll give it a margin of 40 pixels and zero pixels. And then we're going to transform, translate X, negative 100%. And we'll transition the transform 0 0.4 seconds ease in. Okay, so that'll take care of all of the list items in the unordered list. So now we need to attack the icons inside 
the list item. So that's going to be nav unordered list list item icon. We'll give it a font size of 20, let's say font size of 20. And we'll do a margin right of 10 pixels. Then to ensure that we get that nice sort of like step gradient with each one of the icons, we're gonna go ahead and begin to attack them all separately. So let's do navigation, unordered list, list item, plus list item. So we'll attack the second list item. This one we're gonna give a margin left of 15 pixels. And we'll need to apply the transform as well. Transform, translate X, negative 150%. Then we'll grab the navigation unordered list, list item, plus list item, plus list item to get us access to the last one. And in this one, we'll give it a margin of twice as much to give it that step effect. So margin left is gonna be 30 pixels. And then we're going to adjust the, uh, the X axis, transform, translate X. This one will need to be by negative 200%. And so by starting with 100%, 150% for the second one, and then 200% for the third one ensures that when we close out the navigation bar, they all get pushed properly all the way off screen. I think that's all we're going to need to do for the navigation bar. So now let's go ahead and affect the image real quickly. That'll be in the container image div, and we'll do a max width of 100%. We don't want that running off the screen. And in the article content, we will adjust the max width of 1000 pixels and we'll give it a margin of, let's say, 50 pixels auto. Next, let's, uh, let's style the title tag, so content of H1. We'll give it a margin of zero. And then we'll do the content of small. And we're going to do a color. We'll do a gray color and we'll do a font style of italics since it is a an author's name. Okay, next we'll do the content of paragraph styling. The paragraph and the content, we'll do color, we'll do 333 for a nice gray, and then we'll give it a line height of one and a half times normal. And that takes care of all the paragraph content. So now I think that this is all of the styling that we're gonna need. This is really the bulk of the project. Let's save that, and it looks beautiful. All right, we have the title, the name of the journalist, we have the dummy text, we have here a nice title for the image, the image looks beautiful, the subtext looks beautiful. The only thing that I notice is that we don't have our circle, so there must be something going on with that. And I actually see where we went wrong. It's gonna be under the index. I misspelled circle, I put circle, so obviously it doesn't know what I'm talking about. We save that, ah, perfect, so that comes up perfectly. So we can see here now we have everything coming closer to the finished product. Of course, no functionality yet because we haven't written the JavaScript, but here is going to be the easiest part. So if we jump into the script.js, or script.js, apologize, we're going to need to define three constants, one for our open button, one for the close button, and then one for the container so that we can access the class list and add and remove the show nav class. So let's do a constant equal to open. We're gonna set that equal to document get element by ID since we've named it open like so. A constant close again equal to the document get element by ID as we've named it close. And then we'll do a constant equal to container. This is going to be equal to document uh, get query or rather a query selector because we've assigned it a class, so we'll uh, query for the container class, like so. And then next we're gonna do an add event listener to the open button, and it's gonna be click. And whenever we click the open button, we want the following function to be performed, which is going to be K 
container dot class list dot add. I'm going to add a show nav class. All right, and that looks good. Then we're going to do the same thing for the close. We're going to add an event listener. It's going to be a click listener. And when this listener happens, we're going to have the function of grabbing the container, accessing the class list. We're going to, oh, I just made a mistake here. We're not going to add event listener. We're going to add the class show nav. And then down here, we're going to add, rather remove the class show nav. Show nav, okay. And I believe that's all the JSS that we need. JS, I keep saying JSS, that's all the JavaScript that we're gonna need. And so everything here looks good. Let's go ahead and reload the project and see how this works. So, ah, it's beautiful. Look at that, we have that beautiful pivot, brings up the hidden navigation, the icons that we've sourced from fontawesome.com, the colors that we've gotten from the palette from adobe.com, the beautiful image that we got from unsplash.com, the beautiful font that we got from fonts.google.com, and then everything that we've put together, just like a wonderful architect, this thing has been uh, incredible. And as you can see, fairly easy to construct. So hopefully this has been a fun video. Of course, just like always, the entire source code will be available uh, from a link to the GitHub page. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to direct those below. Otherwise, I hope this has been an enjoyable video. Hope to see everyone back again in the next video. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night.